everyone and welcome to Maple Leaf ESL. My name is Andrew and thank you for joining me here in the classroom today. For today's phrasal verbs lesson, I want to take a look at expressions that use the word do. Okay, as you can see here, I've selected seven different phrasal verbs and some of them have more than one definition. Okay, let's get started first with do in, which I put here has two definitions. So the first one I wrote, to make tired, injured, or exhausted. Okay, well this is certainly a more spoken phrasal verb. Think about if I'm really tired. Maybe I go to the gym and I do a long workout, maybe for like two hours, and then afterwards, oh, I'm so tired, I'm so exhausted. So then I could say, well the gym really did me in today, or all that exercise really did me in. Okay, think about maybe I had a long week at the office. Maybe every day I had to work overtime, so I come home, so I would come home really late. So maybe on Friday I get home late and I say, whew, that week really did me in. So in this case it means this week made me really tired because of all the work I had to do. So it could be sort of anything physical. Think about if I go for a hike, or maybe I go for a swim, or I was playing sports. So then I might say, those things did me in, so they made me really tired. Oh, that hike really did me in, so that hike made me really tired, or made me really exhausted. Okay, I also wrote up there injured as one of the meanings for this one. Okay, think about it in a larger sense. Imagine a hurricane, or an earthquake, or something like that, that destroys a city. Maybe it makes bridges collapse, and buildings get damaged, and people get hurt or killed, even worse, then we could say that the earthquake really did the city in, or the hurricane really did that country in. So in that case, it means the city in itself was kind of injured, and the people in it were injured, and everything was damaged. So the city was done in by the earthquake. So we could probably use it like that. Okay, and the second definition I put there, to murder, this is certainly a slang expression. It's not the type of expression that you would probably use a lot, but it's the type of thing you might hear in a movie or in a TV show. Specifically, like a gangster one or like a mafia one. Think about if somebody's worried that they might get done in, then they're worried that they might get killed. Or maybe he got done in by the mob boss. So he got killed or he got murdered by the mob boss. So we might use that one like, we might use this expression like this, but again, we would probably hear it more in film rather than use it. Okay, next one there is do away with, and I put there to get rid of. Okay, and remember to get rid of means to abolish or to sort of, you know, make disappear or not use anymore. This is typically used when we're talking about things like rules or laws or policies. Think about this. Imagine if my city uh, came up with a new law and maybe the law is, I don't know, you must wear a bicycle helmet. Okay, well that seems like a good law, but maybe it's become really unpopular. So we should do away with the new helmet law. Okay, or think about my school. Maybe my school says that um, maybe boys are not allowed to wear earrings. Well, maybe I don't like this policy. Maybe I think it's unfair. Girls are allowed to wear earrings, so why aren't boys? So then I think we should do away with this new policy. So we should get rid of it, right? We should abolish that new policy. So again, typically when we use do away with, it's about do away with a law, do away with a policy, or to do away with a rule. So we typically use it in those ways. Okay, next one there is do by, and for this one I put to treat or handle. Okay, this one is interesting. It's typically used with an adverb, such as to do well by. Okay, so for example, if I do well by my children, that means I have treated my children well, right? So of course that's a positive thing. I've done well by my children. If I've done well by my parents, right? Maybe my parents are getting really old and I've got to take care of them and I'm doing a good job of that, right? I'm kind of showing them the proper respect. So I've done well by my parents. Okay, or think about this. Maybe I work for a company uh, for 20 years 
and now I'm going to quit or I'm going to retire. And maybe the company has always treated me well. They've always shown me respect. So I can say the company has done well by me. So again, that means the company has treated me well, or they've handled me well, or they've dealt with me in a good way. So we typically use it in that phrase to do well by someone. Okay, next one there is do over, and I wrote to do something again. Okay, this one's pretty simple. I think it's the same thing as to redo, like I'd like to redo that. I'd like to do it again. So think about this. Maybe I took a test and I didn't do really well on the test. So then I might say, wow, I'd really like to do that test over if I could, right? I'd really like to redo or rewrite that test. So I'd like to do it over. Sometimes people say it in more of a, a sort of metaphorical sense or, or just like in a, in a fantasy sense where I wish I could do my childhood over or I wish I could do that situation over even when that's not possible. Of course, we can't do our childhood over, but maybe because I had such a good childhood or there's something I'd like to relive, then I could say I'd like to do that over. Of course, this can also be used as a noun phrase. So for instance, I'd like a do-over, so I'd like a chance to do that again. So we could use it like that as well. Okay, next one there is do without, and I put to not have something, but be okay. All right, so this can be used in a sort of literal sense, or it can be used more in a hope sense. Think about it as hope. We could all do without war, and we could do without disease, and we could do without famine and AIDS, and poverty, and guns, and all these other sort of diseases and ills in our societies and in our world. So we could all do without those things. Okay, but then if we get now a little more specific, well, think about technology. I'm sure most of us have, we've got a laptop and a desktop computer and a smartphone and an iPad. Well, most of us could probably do without most of those things. So that means we could not have smartphones and laptops and I'm sure we'd still be okay. We'd still survive, right? So we'd be doing okay without those things. Okay, next one there is do up and I've got three different definitions for this one. The first one says to fasten or close. Okay, well this one is usually talking about our clothing, right? For instance, I've got buttons on my shirt, so if I'm gonna do them up, that means I'm gonna put the buttons together, right? So I'm gonna do up my buttons. Think about a parent saying that to a child. It's cold outside, please do up your jacket. So that could be with a zipper, or it could be the buttons, or something like that. So please do it up. It also could be used for a seatbelt. Please do up your seatbelt, right? If they make an announcement on an airplane, they would use the more formal choice and they would say, please fasten your seatbelt. But if it was my friend in the car, I might say, hey, please do up your seatbelt. I probably wouldn't use the word fasten in that situation because it might seem a little too formal with my friends. So instead, do up your seatbelt, do up your jacket, do up your shirt. So we use it in those kind of ways. Okay, next one there says to decorate in a fancy way. Okay, well this one's pretty interesting. It is definitely slang, but it's very common. Okay, think about this. We're gonna have a big office Christmas party. Oh, really? Well, we should do up the office with Christmas decorations. So that means we should decorate the office with Christmas decorations. Or maybe I'm gonna have a birthday party at my house for one of my friends. So let's do up the house. That would mean let's make the house look really nice. Let's make it look fancy. Let's make it look clean. Let's make it look good. Let's do up the house. So let's decorate it. Okay, if we compare that to the next one, which is pretty similar, I put there to celebrate in a lavish way. Remember, lavish means like kind of expensive and fancy or something like that. Okay, this, was an, this one is also slang. If my friend says to me, let's do it up tonight. Well, what he means is, Let's go do something in a big way. Let's not just go to a regular restaurant. Let's go to a fancy, expensive restaurant. Let's not take a taxi. Let's get a limousine. And that restaurant, let's make sure that it's on the top floor of a big building. So that means we're gonna do things in a fancy way. We're gonna do it in a lavish way. Like I said, the limousine, 
the, the tall building, the fancy restaurant. So let's do it up. So we can see actually how similar those two are that in both cases, when you're doing it up, you're doing it in a big way or a fancy way or an expensive way. So something like that. Okay, and last one there is do with, and I put to make a wish for or to benefit from. Okay, well again, this one I'd say is much more common in spoken English. It's also pretty similar to the phrasal verb go for, as in the phrase, oh, it's so hot, I could really go for a cold drink. Well, in that same sentence, I could say, oh, it's so hot. I could really do with a cold drink right about now. Okay, or imagine, uh, imagine I'm studying for a test and the test is really difficult and I'm having trouble studying for it. Well, I could really do with a tutor right now or I could really do with some help right now. So that means I could really benefit from some help right now or I could benefit from a tutor right now. So any of those situations where you're gonna say, I could really go for, or I could really benefit from something, you could also say, I could really do with, right? I could really do with a vacation right now because I've been working so hard. Or I could really do with a friend right now because I'm feeling sad and I need somebody to talk to. So we typically use it in spoken English in those types of ways. Okay, next, I wanna see if we can erase the whiteboard here and let's look at some written examples using each of these expressions. All right, let's look at the first example I put here, I need some rest. Going for that jog did me in. So going for that jog made me really tired. Next one here, he's scared they're going to do him in for talking to the police. So he's scared they're going to kill him. And as I mentioned, this is the type of thing that we would see probably in a movie in most cases. It's about time our government did away with the death penalty. So it's about time our government abolished or got rid of the death penalty. Her family has really done well by me. So again here, her family has really treated me well. Maybe they've treated me like a son, so they've done well by me. I'm not too happy with the results. I wish I could do it over. So again, if that was a test or something like that, then I wish I could do it again. Okay, bit of a conversation here. Oh no, I forgot my smartphone at home. I think you can do without it for one day, right? So I think you'll be okay. You're still gonna live, you're still gonna survive without that smartphone for a day. Can you show me how to do up this helmet? So again, maybe I'm having trouble putting the button together. So can you show me how to do it up, how to fasten it or how to close it? Okay, next one, let's do up your apartment for the party. So again, let's decorate your party or, or decorate your apartment or let's make your apartment look really good for the party. Okay, and similar here, we should go out on the town and do it up tonight. So that means let's go have a big lavish night. Let's go spend some money and have a really good time. Okay, and last one here, I could do with some rest and relaxation this weekend. So I could really benefit from some rest and relaxation this weekend. Okay, well, that is the end of today's lesson. I hope my examples and definitions were clear and easy to understand. Thank you so much for joining me here at Maple Leaf ESL, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.